The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. For the modern era, I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Here is a list of the septuagenarians I've seen this week. Donald Fagan, David Crosby. Anyway, here's my kids. <laughs> Fucking best hype man in the biz. Hey, I'm going to get the crowd all hot and ready for you. Uh, so I went and saw Steely Dan. That was really cool. Uh, yeah. I guess you guys aren't reeling in the ears. 23 skadoo. And here's my kids. Um, I uh, like the Chilean miners. We've reemerged here. We've been buried deep below the King's Theater, and now we have emerged here. That was a weird... Why did we do that? I don't know, but it was beautiful down there. A lot of bodies. Yeah. yeah. Weird amount of bodies. Um, I found out something interesting today, guys. Ooh. I have limits. I think I have... I think I know what it might be. It is that I have limits. Yeah. I, my passion for... I don't want to say bad things, but I guess bad things... The lower Garbage end of thing. The hurting, low, hurting yourself with questionable cuisine. The lower end of culture, I think, is yeah. well documented. Yeah. Um, food culture, specifically cuisine. But I, went, I did, I mean, I, I. We're in Food City, right? Food City, USA. Food City, USA, yeah. Great spots to eat, great spots to dine. I was like, ooh, I went to this great Italian place up in Harlem. Oh, had some of the best ramen I've ever had in my life. Oh, yeah. Pasta with, ooh, the great wine the, list. You've got to check the, it out. Bubba oh, there's Gump a shrimp company and all, all the other Wait, which Wait, one? Well, Just the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company I went to today. And now, um, I, I don't think I've heard of that one. Justin, can you give me a little bit of I background? Had, we had, it was <laughs> very cold. <laughs> Damn, dude. If, that's the first thing you got to lay down at Bubba Gump's feet. That's <laughs> the one thing about it is here's some good reasons to go there. It's very cold. And it is inside. Okay. The one thing you can say for Bubba Gump Shrimp Company is it is indoors. <laughs> That's huge. Uh, I had two kids with me, and they were, you know, kids. And it was cold, so we went into Bubba Gump. Well, we were trying to choose between Bubba Gump Shrimp Company and uh, Hard Rock Cafe. And I said... Oh. How can you choose? I know. I said Bubba Gumps would oh, be Oh, was more... Applebee's closed? Bubba Gumps would be... Um... Oh, there was a wait at the Olive Garden. I said it would be more hilarious, so I went there. Yeah. Not realizing that in addition to getting material for my podcast, I would have to eat the food with my human body. <laughs> I... Here's the thing. I'm not picky. This is law. This is set of law. I'm not a pick. It was bad, guys. <laughs> I don't know how to say it except the food was bad. <laughs> the experience, though, was bad. There was, there is a, they have a sign on the table, and it, you can flip it, right? And if it's blue, it says, run for us, run. And that means the oh, server shit. can just go right on by. And if you need something, you flip it to red, uh, and it says, stop for us, stop. And any server in the place will stop at your table to see what you need, except none of them care. <laughs> I could flip that that bastard they're, back and forth. No one gave a solitary shit. Their magic shoes carry them right back to the great the break room. Right back. Uh, no one actually addressed any of my many needs. Uh, what I did uh, enjoy was the table right next to us. Um, Sydney kept like nudging me and and like over there. There's a table of two middle aged people sharing what appeared to be a bottle of wine they brought from home. That's 
Very good. I'm pretty sure they didn't get it from Bubba Gump because it wasn't in a box. So it probably wasn't from there. But I was a little judgy at first, but then by the end of the meal, I was like, fuck, I wish I'd drunk a half bottle of wine. <laughs> Those people are, uh, look like they're having the time of their lives. Right. We had peel and eat shrimp that we ordered, and they said, when we, I said peel and eat shrimp, and you know what they said? Do you want spicier garlic? Excuse me? For my peel and eat shrimp, they brought them to the table. The tails and the legs and stuff were not there. The peeling had happened. Huh. So already. they were just, and eat shrimp. And eat. <laughs> and here's a fun thing. All my job was to eat. And when I did my job, it tasted like bologna exactly. <laughs> So it wasn't hilarious. I did do it. Maybe now, ta- tragedy plus time, etc. Right. And, uh, tragedy plus time and Pepsi did equals it never, comedy. Did it never really sink in while you were eating at this restaurant that you were dining at a themed restaurant named after Tom Hanks' dead friend from that one movie? When you first walk into this place, and we're not just going to talk about this, we'll talk about other things, but when you first walk into this place, there is a bench with a box of chocolates permanently adhered to it. And a ma- it's been 25 years since this fucking flick came out, guys. That's surreal. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I walk in there, I'm like, um, excuse me. <laughs> Can we talk about your art selection? This is very strange. There are people of legal voting <laughs> age who might now, for the first time, watch Forrest Gump and think, is this a movie based off that restaurant chain? Yeah. Based off that bad bologna restaurant? Uh, hey, what if we do our thing, our usual thing? Yeah, can we start with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, why don't we... I want to start with a Yahoo from the Yahoo Answer Service. Uh, this first one was sent in by uh, Emma Kant. Thank you, Emma. It's Yahoo Answers user Viv who asks... Okay. How to... How to... Quietly... Eat chips... I eat lunch in the quiet section of the library. How do I quietly eat my Lay's? Humble brag. The answer is obvious. Put it in your mouth. Close the mouth. Wait five minutes. Oh, God. I'm saying, it's not the pleasant answer. It's not the answer you choose to do. But if you're asking me how to quietly consume a chip, it is to let that bad boy dissolve in there. Yeah, and then you, and you just swallow it like a medicine yeah. pill. And then you slurp it on down. Yeah, uh, man. Like an oyster. <laughs> I would get as many Pringles as I wanted for that serving and put them all in my mouth at the same uh-huh. time and then bite them all at once and say, oops, I farted. <laughs> All right. No one would ever suspect. Why would he lie about that? I, I, it's a perfect unless crime. Unless you have a terrible gastric incident. They are two sounds that sound very different. <laughs> they don't know. Okay, so you're, in your reality, someone's like, I've heard you fart before. That's bullshit. No, no what I'm saying is they might hear you fart and say, I have heard a human yeah. fart before. Nice, nice try, bub. That you, was 16 Pringles. You sound like Pringles. a wood chipper. Yeah. Are you okay? I am, I am also... I'm sorry, did your bowl just crunch? <laughs> I am also... Can ru- you stop <laughs> popping for a minute? <laughs> what have you been eating? Have you been eating those poppers you throw at the ground and they snap? I'm also... also I'm also a robot. <laughs> I meant to tell you guys. And those are my sound of my various gears cranking and whirring away. Can you sit next to the library grandfather clock and eat a chip a second? <laughs> That's very good. Chomp. 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 You're going to have to get really good, like... Two tubes of Pringles just kind of alternating back and forth a double hand. And motion. then when you run out, you have to loudly exclaim, Your clock broke! <laughs> Stop making noise! Now, this one would take a little investment and a little pre planning. Okay. Mm-hmm. But could you get a book bound and you write on the cover a book about eating chips? And then you eat behind it, and someone's gonna look over and go, Shh, and go, Oh, it's just a really good book. Oh, uh, yeah. This is an audio book. <laughs> That's nothing. It's like one of those greeting cards that makes noises. Yes. This is an immersive book experience. And, then you, and they're like, what happened? And you say, I just found the chips in here. Could you just do it in the bathroom? 
Could you just stand up and loudly announce, I have to go to the bathroom for the other reason. If I walked into a public restroom and saw a human being just standing there eating chips, I would call the police. No, Speaking I as someone who once walked into a bathroom and saw someone eating corn on the cob, yes. I think chips would be much less uh, confrontational. So, okay, this is how that scene would play out. You walk in, you make eye contact, and they go, I wanted to be quiet. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go pee in the periodicals. Excuse I would probably me. get I would probably get a little sassy about it and just assume they're lucky I'm at a library. Yeah. Uh, my mind went to I would say like I'll I'll let you go, but you gotta cut me in on this chips deal. But I don't think a bathroom's where I want stranger chips. <laughs> I fucking love that show, man. <laughs> uh, we also take questions from the audience and we try to help those people. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, I am a father of a five and a half year old girl who loves Barbies and especially loves when I play Barbies with her. Normally she's very creative making her own DIY Barbie clothes and furniture, but a problem arises when it comes to actually play with the dolls. The scenarios she puts her Barbies in are devoid of any conflict. <laughs> when I play with her, I try to instill some sort of small crisis for the dolls to overcome. Like, um running late to the airport or fighting a monster. Every time I try to create some sort of story, my daughter argues that only good things can happen and pretty much gives me a script for what my Barbies are allowed to say and do. How can I teach my daughter to craft compelling stories so we can keep playing Barbies together? That's from Mattel Melodrama in Manhattan. Are you here? Hello. You could just, uh chill and have a cake party, J.J. Abrams, and chill the fuck out. Nope. Hard disagree. When we play with our children, we are not playing to have fun, we're playing to teach. In this day and age of content generation, multi, transmedia, multi-year streaming deals, the number one skill you can pass on to your children is fucking narrative crafting. Yeah, can't wait for hey, can't hey. wait for Charlie and BB to get their shows on yeah. CISO too in the Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. It's another episode of my actual play Barbie podcast. Uh, yeah. You got to teach these kids how to do a story. Yeah. Cuz here's here's my bet, right? Your daughter likes when nice things happen to Barbie because your daughter likes the Barbie. And I get that, but can you explain to her that that's not going to strengthen Barbie's will of character? It's not right. going to make her tough. Here's the thing. Yes, that's nice. But what is she learning? Is thank five you. and a half too young to learn about the hero's journey? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Listen, yes, Barbie, Barbie thought she was doing okay. But right. she had to lose it all to find out how much she had. A daddy production. <laughs> <laughs> Bar uh, Barbie has to grow. Barbie has to learn. Yes. Yeah, Barbie's great, but like, what if Barbie had challenges that she had to overcome? And yes. do you care more about Barbie now that she's succeeded or failed? I don't know. Right. Maybe we're still so early. We're storyboarding. Maybe Ken loses his job. Barbie yes. has to take on a second job to cover, and then he finds that he really likes being at home, and Barbie's not cool with that, because that I fucking don't know. sucks. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> right, and then they talk through their problems. Now their marriage is stronger than ever. Okay, now I'm getting the... Okay, I'm on the daughter's side now. I just flipped. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome what, to the you team. You don't want to see Ken and Barbie deal with their marital issues? See, I had a fix for this that I was like, this is a good idea. I'm going to say this out loud. And then I was like, no, it's not a good fix. My fix for it was just imagine the drama in your own mind, which is to say, Barbie is going to leave Ken one of these days and doesn't know how to do it. And just keep that in your play yes. with I, Ken. But at that point, your play is going to be different and the daughter's going to know why. I'm, yes, I'm, I, I do that with Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Right, you're just assuming they're eating the gazelles right. off screen. Well, yeah. the thing that I'm always wondering is, what happened to Prince Monday? And I think about it all the time. Right. When I'm watching that show, I believe that there was a bloody coup in which Prince Tuesday overthrew Prince Monday. Right. I and know I the think about it all the time. I know the problem. Barbie and Ken can be happy. They should be happy. But who's that that just moved in next door? 
third wheel, adding some drama into the story. It's kind of like Stinky Doug or whatever, you know? You, you need your Dupree of your uh, you, yes. me, and Dupree. You need your Dupree. Oh, no, the Skeletor the, has moved in. Skeletor moved in next door. The property values are dropping. Is now she, we got drama. Is she too young to learn about the Stinky Doug journey? Uh, here is a Yahoo that was sent in by Sophie. Thank you, Sophie. It's uh, Yahoo Answers user Michael who asks... We have soft flesh on the outside and hard bone on the inside. Okay. You've got Justin's attention, now reel him in. Halfway through. We have soft flesh on the inside and uh, on the outside and hard bone on the inside. Stop selling, stop selling, I love it. Animals, like crabs and insects, have soft in the inside Hard on the outside? How does that work? Huh. How do they even move without bones in there? Right. Is it just their jelly squishing around until they walk? Their jelly pushing up against their armor. Well, this seems like a poor design choice. Thank you. If you could trade... I hate seeing you hold that microphone. I do not know. If you could trade... Feeling the breath of your uh, newborn baby on the nape of your neck. If you could trade that for bitchin' armor that helped you to sever your enemies. Yes. Obviously, right? Right. Yes, obviously. I mean, listen, we've all dreamed of a mugger pulling a knife on you, going to stab you, and it shatters against your carapace. No knives. No knives. There's no more violence. We fix violence. There's no point. Everyone's got armor. Everyone's got exoplating. There's no point in doing crimes. Right. Everybody's got claws for hands and exoplating. There's no crime anymore. What would be the yeah, point? I mean, there would still be, you could still embezzle, even if everybody had a care about Are you going to embezzle if you know your boss has giant exo claws? Yes, because in the world you've posited he can't get through my armor. Some people have better claws than other people. Okay, so now there is some... There's still disparity. There's still some violence. There's still haves and have-nots, but we don't fix it through (laughs) crime. There's no more crime. Okay, there's no violent crime. There's no white-collar crime, (laughs) Travis. Milk milk is a controlled substance in this world okay. because we don't want people get we don't want the imbalance to get too wild. I, I love the skull. The God. skull's great. God, I love the skull. I'm wild about cool it. Cool stuff. Keep, brain helmet Protect. in my skin. Good stuff. I love how if I if they cut through the top of my face, it'll stop because the skull yes. will stop before the brain. Skull says not so fast. But what here's... My friend Brain is in here. Let me, f- <laughs> let me flip it on you. If there's a part they can't cut through, let's put that on the outside. <laughs> then I don't even got to worry about knives no more. God, come on. I, I would, <laughs> as long as we're doing a note session for God, I would also say rib cage. I love that. Love Protecting that. Protecting my thing. Why'd you put holes Why'd in there? Why'd you put the gaps Make in it there? Solid. <laughs> This protects everything. Why would you have holes? All the way down to you. It stops in my tummy area. If we're talking about solid chest If we're talking about vulnerabilities, you know my brain's in here. You know that that soup's important. And we love the skull. Love the skull. Love the skull. But but can we talk about the two holes you put in the front with the bullseyes in front of them made of jelly? Are you sure? And this thing here, that if it's hit wrong, I die? I die? The thing that's literally in front of me all you, the time. You put a hoops destruct button on the front of my face. Are you sure? And also, as long as we're at it, weak points here, 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 here. Solid bone. Thank you. Also, if sugar bad, why it tastes so good? Yes. Thank you. You gotta help me help you. Why does the sugar make our mouth bones fall out? Yes, and while we're talking about mouth bones, why I got to floss? One solid piece. One big t- One solid chomper. I love your son. All his great stuff. I'm yes. crazy about it. But the two holes in the front are so bad. I'm not wild about that. I'm not wild about it. What if I had plating right here that I had to flip up? Yes. To, to say cool stuff or eat hot dog. <laughs> Imagine it. I've improved your creation. You're very welcome, but I'm your creation, so you shouldn't feel bad about it. Yeah. All right. That's asked and answered. We solved yeah. it again. <laughs> How many? 
how many of our questions could we solve just by giving God some notes? <laughs> Is it an issue that I shop for underwear online while at work? I do have big, very visible monitor, and it's not like I'm... I'm <laughs> it's not what I thought that sentence was going to... I have big, very visible underwear. That's how I like it. That's my style. Prominent. They big. hang out the top of my pants and form basically a skirt. It's rad. <laughs> I like my underpants billowy. I do have very big, visible monitor, and it's not like I'm in an enclosed office. Should I just wait to order things in general when I'm on a personal computer? That's from still not currently using my personal computer. I would hope not. Hope this not. is a sh live show. Are you here? Oh no, that was fucking chilling. They got caught. <laughs> They're in jail. Well, if you ever run into this exact scenario at your job, I guess we can keep going. Uh, hey, maybe don't shop for anything while you're at work on your big visible monitor. Okay, it's been a long time since any of us have had like office solid jobs, office fair. jobs. It's not 100% of the time work, right? We all you know that. You time to yourself. You may, right. If you're there for say nine hours, you're doing three hours of work. Wow, fucking employee of the month. I would say though, if somebody's like, Justin, that's not a work time activity. I say, well, I need the underwear to come to work. <laughs> if I don't got these, I can't come in, right. okay? You don't want that, I don't want that. You, you I don't want work. You don't want me having stuff wicked away from my business? I gotta wick stuff away if I'm gonna sit here and handle the I big need, account. I need top-notch wicking. Are you watching YouTube video reviews of cereal? I gotta eat the cereal to get calories for work energy. Yes. It's the a work, business expense. It's a work thing. You could do what I did when I uh, worked for Tommy Smurl uh, and wanted to uh, watch, a, watch a vid or listen to some, some Pandora tunes where I would just get the browser window real, real small. Oops, like a secret, oop, like a secret microscope. Hello, underwear. You can't see all of it at once. You gotta just look. So even <laughs> you if gotta, some, quadrants. So even if somebody was looking at your computer, they'd be like, that's a fucked up pop-up ad. How did I get, no, nope, I'm getting underwear. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Could you? <laughs> they, you'll never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you have a big visual monitor and you work in like an open thing, but could you do something like this where you have the monitor and you, twist and you shop like this? And then when someone comes in, they're like, what are you doing? And you're just like, I hurt myself. <laughs> this is how I have to look at my computer can from you, now on. Can you take your computer monitor into the bathroom? <laughs> this one also solves a lot of problems. Yeah. yeah, that's why I spent most of my jobs in the bathroom. Not this one, you'll be happy to hear. Uh, I do most of this one in the office, but... Oh, I'd like, I'd like to play out a scenario here. Okay, J sure. Justin, I would like you to play, pe play the boss. Okay. You know, what, my, what kind of a boss am I? Um, you like to think you're everybody's friend, okay. but listen, all you're right. still all about the bottom line. Kinda so, like, a boss then? Yeah. <laughs> and you've just walked up to my desk. Who and am I? I am, hey, uh, who am I in this scene? You're kind of the office prankster, but okay. you really haven't done a joke in a while. Okay. Because you're going through something at home. Right, sure, sure, sure. And everyone still thinks of you as the office prankster. And okay. here in a couple days, we'll right. put together. Okay. So you've just walked up, and I'm uh, shopping for underwear on my computer. Travis. Oh, no, my name's Derek. <laughs> Sorry, that was on me. Okay. Continue. Derek. <laughs> You're... <sighs> Give me all the money in the office. I've got a katana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. One note. Was that meant to be a prank, or are you playing that? Is that... <laughs> well, it depends. How rough is the stuff I'm going through at home? Uh, not quite there. Okay, it's I'm a not... prank. It's okay. a prank, yeah. <laughs> Oh, other Derek. Did I scare you? You did. <laughs> You've been practicing with your katana. Two years just for this prank. <laughs> Um, I know that it's not good for me to lead with criticism, so I'm going to try to ease into it. Okay. So, Derek, have you seen this, um, this new movie, The Joker, everybody's talking about? <laughs> have you seen this, The Joker? I the don't one get with Jared Leto? I don't get out to the movies very much. They make peg nauseous. Anyway, my wife peg that I have. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, you have a wife, Pig? <laughs> My wife, Peg. You've Peg. met her at that party. Yes. Anyway, uh, this computer screen you got going around. I love how most of it's work, but some of it's underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. I was shopping for a present for you. Oh, oh boy. That's really nice. But if Peg finds underwear that she doesn't buy me in my drawers, I think we're going to have a little bit of a problem at home. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, now he's dying! <laughs> Other Garrett, get over here! You see me behind him with two knives in his back. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! No! You took the prank too gotcha. far! <laughs> That's not a prank, you've killed him! Blood gush, blood gush, blood gush. <laughs> If only we had our hearts up on the outside. No. <laughs> None of this would have happened. No, no. And scene, I guess. Uh, here's another Yahoo that was sent in by Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a listener of our show. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. She said in a normal voice. Ray, if you're listening, your voice is normal. It's fine. We are, all have different instruments. Ma. Uh, it's by, asked by Yahoo Answers user Ted, who asks, Matthew McConaughey fan fiction? Does anyone know where I can find fan fiction about Matthew McConaughey? The internet? It doesn't need to be anything crazy, just like going about his life, and maybe a mystery happens. Okay, listen. I was prepared to perhaps mock this person. Right. As we so often do. But if there was a TV show right. in which Matthew McConaughey played himself, mm -hmm. just trying to go about his life, making movies, Fool's Gold 2 or whatever. Right. And also... Mysteries just kept popping up and no one else was going to take care of him except him. Right. I would watch the fuck out of that. It's, it's, that was True Detective, basically. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay, so here's what, how we're going to do it. Okay. Uh, we're going to do one word at a time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it'll be the rest of the show. Now we're just going to build and see if we can come up with anything good. And if it's bad, if the story starts to go wrong, we'll jettison it and start okay. again. I'll start. Matthew. Broderick. Whoa. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that close. <laughs> Fuck. He could still be there. He could still be There's, there. There was no prompt in there that said, and please don't include okay. Matthew Broderick. Uh McConaughey, Broderick's his middle name. Nice. <laughs> okay. Was. Pulled, pulled it from the fire. Drinking. A. Whiskey. Ooh. And. <laughs> it's you. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> With. A. <laughs> Tall. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> statue. <laughs> it's a statue of Matthew. So far, this story rules. It's so yeah, good. I don't think this is working. Let's get the mystery in there. Okay, okay. let's start again. Uh, no, 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 we'll keep going. Faster, though. Okay, right, right. We're overthinking it. Yes, you're okay. right. Okay. The gunshots rang out in the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I messed up. <laughs> This is the shortest mystery I <laughs> No, play it out. And <laughs> he instilled hope in a generation of musicians. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> the end. <laughs> We've done it again. Not bad. We didn't even get to the dog or love interest I had planned. Do you think mysteries just naturally happen during Matthew McConaughey's day? In which case, this would not be fan fiction, but non-fiction. This would just be his diary. Yes. A memoir. I, do, I think any mystery that happens in Mac Matthew McConaughey's life ends with, it was Woody Harrelson that stole my weed. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. I left my bongos at Woody Harrelson's house. <laughs> Something along those lines. That's right. I asked Woody Harrelson to watch my dog. Right. Anyway, uh, should we do another question? My office holds mandatory annual safety meetings, but I skipped this year's meeting to go to the DC Mabim Bim Show in September. <laughs> HR told me, no problem. <clears throat> Just come to the makeup meeting. But then they scheduled the makeup meeting for today. <laughs> and I missed it to see my Bim Bam live again. In my defense, I bought the tickets way before they scheduled the meetings. That's less cool. You should have just left that out. Anyway, <laughs> I liked it better when you're a rebel. Uh, can you give me the lowdown on office safety so that I can accomplish both things today? That's from Super Safe in Silver Spring. Are you here? Oh, real close. Real close. Um, Hello. In the splash zone. Hey, Polly, can I trouble you for a little bit more wine whenever you get a little second? vino? Thank you, little Paul. Little vino, Paul. Thank you, bud. Uh, for, so, first and foremost, yes, you got to find a comfortable level, angle, height for your chair. You're going to sit in it every day. Yeah. And you're going to think, mm, I'm a little uncomfortable now, but it's fine. I just got to get to work. And then you're going to be at that job for 46 years. Yes. And it's going to break your insides. Yeah. Get a comfortable chair. Yeah. Spine will be all twisted up like hollow bread. Yep. It'll be a nightmare. Yep. Next, the printer is super heavy. Thank you. Yeah. So be careful about that. <laughs> you're, that's going to sound like a challenge, and you're going to think, I, oh, yeah? It's not a challenge. It's a warning and a threat. Yes. Don't try to pick up the printer. It's really fucking heavy. This isn't really us heavy. saying like the printer's heavy for most people, but some. Be- this is like even Chad can't pick it up, and he's ripped. He's really strong. He works out all the time, and I saw him try to lift it, and he went, oh, that's heavy. That's how heavy the printer is. You're telling is. me Chad, who is on the cover of the October issue of Big Guys Monthly, <laughs> can't lift it, but you think you can? The printer's so fucking heavy. <laughs> don't. Be smart also, about this. Also, don't do stair tricks. I know it's exciting. <laughs> you want to do tricks on the stairs. You want to impress the young guy who just got a job in the mailroom and has a sick scooter, and he can do stair tricks, but he's a young guy. <laughs> and stair tricks are a young man's game. Don't impress him that way. Impress him by, like, buying him beer or something. He'll appreciate that. Don't do stair tricks. Especially not if you're carrying the super heavy printer. Don't touch the fucking printer. No, but I'm saying if you did, but if you did touch the printer. No, sunglasses at work. You're indoors. It's too dark. You're going to fall down the stairs. Don't turn off all the lights so it's a, quote, even playing field. No one will be able to see your sunglasses. It's pointless. Uh, Also, and they probably would be too scared to even cover this in meeting, but we're going to talk about emotional safety. Don't. Janice is going to compliment you, right? She is. She wants something. Yeah. She is using it. Don't She's using you. trust Janice. Not everybody can use the forklift. Yes. They make it look easy. It's not. You nope. said, I, it's cool. I played Shinmu. It doesn't no. matter. It doesn't like that. work. That you you will find nary an X button on the entire thing. Now, if you could, I'm not saying don't do it, but if you could use the forklift to eat with, and film it and put it on YouTube and have it be like a whole viral thing of like, I ate with a fork, lift. Like that is pretty good. Uh, and that might impress the guy in the mail room. Yeah. And I know what you're thinking. Forklift, copier, loophole. I'm lifting it with the copy, the forklift. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's the too heavy. heavy. It's it so is a heavy. printer and scanner and fax machine. All in one. That's heavy. Don't go in the, the elephant pen because you think you can beat them in a fight. This is if you work at a zoo. Yeah, specific to that. If you work at a zoo, I could do a lot just off the top of my head. Lift your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Lift with your knees. No, I like the first one better. Yeah. Hey, come on, Mr. High Stepper. Get him up there. And I'll help you to not trip on Lego buildings. <laughs> it's that's true. That's true. If you lift your knees, they're way up off the floor. <laughs> just a, something I was thinking about. Oh. Breaking. This just came in. This is breaking whoa. news. This is a breaking... Shit. I, whoa, yeah. This is a breaking haunted doll watch. Just came in. I got a notification. I love when it happens when I'm at a show already. It's really convenient. Yeah, it's weird when it just happens like at home or while you're sleeping or something. 
Yeah, true. <laughs> hey, if it just came in, why are you having to search through your, your phone? Does it not serve us? I want like to the- bring up a photo. We'll cut this part out, but just so y'all can... Whoa. Holy <laughs> fucking shit! So what's up? This is a... Monster. Protection troll doll, mystical forest idol, rare, haunted. That's right, a troll haunted doll. All of our interests are colliding. Do I... Do I need to buy another protection doll to protect me from this doll? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. It's a perfect scam. This is from Curious Imports. <laughs> this is written in the style, I mean... It looks like an E.E. E. Cummings poem. Yeah, yeah, it's structured in a very fun way. Protection Troll. <laughs> By Langston Hughes. <laughs> New resin stands four inches high. <laughs> Measurement does not include the hair. No Good? Need, no need to brag. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not counting the hair. <laughs> this is your personal protection troll. Then why do they have it? He will protect you and keep you safe. While keeping you safe, he will make sure that no one can harm you, an important component. (laughs) You'll agree to keeping you safe. Give me all your money. (laughs) Good luck, Robert. I have this toy. No one can bring, make sure that no one can harm you or come in your life to bring harm. And we all know some people like that. Janice. (laughs) Protects against thieves. And criminals. <laughs> Cancel your ADT. You've got this troll. <laughs> Keeps your personal possessions safe and you from harm. We've established that at this point. Yes. I think that this is my bodyguard and it's a troll. It is said that when you hold him and speak to him, he will listen. Well, that's nice, isn't it? I always love in these, by the way, when a sentence start with, it is said, as if the person <laughs> writing it isn't the only one saying it. I am saying that you can talk to it, it's, I guess. And also, what's the other option? You start talking to the troll, and the troll just goes, oh. Pulls out his phone. Um, to keep your troll doll happy, offer him some sunflower seeds. Okay. I didn't know this was a transactional protection because now that you sound like you're in the mob. Yeah, what if I don't give him enough seeds? Will he let someone harm me? I'll keep you and your small business safe. Don't worry about it. Just uh, slide me some of them sunflowers. I just need some more seeds. Oh, uh, your last shipment didn't include the juice. So uh, offer him some sunflower seeds or a small glass of water or wine. Just sit this next to him and you may notice it gone. I don't think I will. (laughs) Likely, probably not. Also, I know what will get you better protection between the water and the wine. I want this troll drunk, (laughs) and I want him angry. Now, hold on. I don't know that I want my protector spirit drunk. If you... (laughs) No, troll, stop the criminal. What? What? Shit. If you hear movement in the home at night, that is when trolls become most active. Okay. It only means he is making sure everything is safe. Okay. Okay, you have become you have now told this person, one, this troll will keep you safe. <laughs> Two, if you hear someone breaking into your home, <laughs> it's probably the troll. That's the sound. Do that's not call the police. <laughs> that's the sound of safety. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> honey, do you hear something? Don't worry, darling. <laughs> it's the troll. Go back to sleep and enjoy that diamond necklace you're wearing. Once you bond to your troll, his energy will be with you and travel with you. You do not need to carry him with you. Okay, so I'm at the Double Tree Philadelphia. I hear a glass smash and someone comes in and starts rooting around. It's fine, sweetheart. It's the The troll. troll. That's how you know that his spirit is still with us. Yeah. Oh, and you know, I probably forgot to leave a bowl of sunflower seeds for him. <laughs> right. He's probably just a hungry boy. Get this little guy with you while you can. Very rare and hard to find. I mean, it's a on, fucking he, troll doll that you painted black a little bit. He's on. I mean, he's on eBay. Not that hard. Yeah. 
as all of you have, that have shopped with us before, get this while you can. Our items go fast. <laughs> this is I like. This is the only time this will be listed on eBay. When the auction is over, we will not relist this item. Oh no! Wait, so isn't like, that how it always works? No, no, no. This person's saying you have one chance to buy. If you don't buy him now, he's sticking with me. <laughs> I've grown too attached. Or I have to throw him into a volcano, which is what the scroll said to do. By the way, there's a scroll. It's so important that you read it, but I did lose it. Where's the part where it's like, by the way, this is all bullshit. You're buying garbage. eBay makes me say this. As required, all metaphysical items are sold as curios. No claims are made. All information based on historic lore and hoodoo slash mystic beliefs. Anything that may or may not happen is up to the one who uses the item sold for entertainment purposes only. This is directly followed by all metaphysical, supernatural, and haunted items do not have on-off switches. Some items take some time to work, and some work right away. And then there are some that may not work at all for <laughs> a person's needs. Uh, you must consider this when purchasing items. If you do not know how to use or active contact us, and we can assist you. Please, for the love that is all this holy, please figure out a way to redirect those calls to my personal cellular phone. <laughs> I would do anything to be like, hello? Yeah, uh, the trolley. Uh, <laughs> listen, I was robbed terribly last night and your troll didn't do anything. Well, let me see. <laughs> Did you let's leave? do some troubleshooting. Let's do some troubleshooting. Did you leave out sunflower seeds and wine? Yeah. I don't know what to do for you. They don't know. Not all of them work for did some you, people. Did you flip on the on switch? They that was a test. There, there isn't a test. one. There isn't one. Anyway, that's your Haunted Doll Watch for this, this week. Hey, everybody. It's Griffin. Thank you so much for listening to this live uh, episode of Mabim Bam. Uh, like we have said the past couple of weeks, we are sort of filling in time. Uh, Travis and Teresa just had a, a baby, and so we're, we're giving him a little bit of a break. And uh, we will be back with new non-live, I guess, dead episodes of my Bim Bam uh, next Monday. So uh, stick with us till then. Uh, this is the second of our Brooklyn shows. That actually, it was our first. The first one we put up was our second one. It's confusing. Uh, but uh, I hope you're enjoying it and uh, got a couple sponsors to tell you about real quick. The first one is Audible. Audible has the books that you listen to, that you hear. Uh, a lot of people eat books with their eyes. Audible says, what about ears, though? Uh, and no matter what your resolution or goal is this year, 2020, 2020, why don't you fill your life with laughter and love with an audiobook at Audible to inspire and motivate you uh, it's, it's real slick and Hey, we can help you with that because we have a challenge for current and new members. If you finish three audiobooks by March 3rd, you'll get a $20 Amazon credit. That's it. Yeah, Audible will keep track of your progress for you. Just go listen to some good books, fill your mind and get stronger and better. And you're going to get a $20 Amazon credit. That's a great deal. Uh, if you're looking for something to listen to, what about uh, Medallion Status from John Hodgman? I'm I'm uh, digging into that one now, and uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's very enriching to me spiritually. Uh, you can choose three titles every month: one audiobook and two exclusive Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. You can listen on any device, anytime, anywhere, and keep your library forever, even if you cancel. So start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash brother or text brother to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash brother for a 30-day trial. Also, I want to tell you about Squarespace. Squarespace, they build the websites. Technically, I guess you build the websites. They build the thing you use to build the beautiful websites that you can use to showcase your work, sell products and services of all kinds, or promote your physical or online business or whatever the hell, man. I don't think Squarespace is going to kick in your door and be like, wrong. Uh, they got beautiful customizable templates created by world-class designers. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. They have free and secure hosting. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. 
uh it's a it's a good pl- it's a good platform folks i don't know what else to say we have uh, a couple websites we've made with squarespace and uh it's really easy and it all looks really good so go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code my brother and you're gonna save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain just just freaking do it thanks again for uh listening thanks to the king's theater for having us in this this show uh in brooklyn it's an absolutely gorgeous venue and we are so fortunate to get to play there uh we are figuring out sort of spring touring schedule and we'll have more to announce there soon i think there may still be some tickets available for our uh, upcoming shows in cincinnati here in february uh you can find tickets to that at mcroy.family along with all the other you know merch and uh new video stuff monster factory stuff uh besties stuff all all kinds of new uh exciting announcements all at mcroy.family uh and yeah i think that's probably about it so here's the rest of the episode uh we'll be back again next monday with a new episode of Bim bam so talk to you then bye nearly two decades ago commander data sacrificed his life the greatest discovery is also about star trek picard jesse thorne won't let us stay on the network unless we do all the star trek series and so here we are (laughs) Doing a show about maybe our favorite Star Trek character of all time. If you're excited to watch the new Star Trek Picard series and you'd like some veteran Star Trek podcasters to watch it along with, we're your guys. Sorry you're stuck with us. What the hell are you doing out here, Picard? Saving the galaxy? So subscribe to The Greatest Discovery. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts. Or at MaximumFun.org. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Uh, what's your What's your name? I'm Charlotte. Hi, I'm Charlotte. A, they, them are kind of person. Okay. Thank you. A couple years ago, my boyfriend's family rescued a pet pig, and I really like her to think that I'm not afraid of her, even though I am. Okay. <laughs> um. So she's about 250 pounds. Holy shit! <laughs> what? <laughs> You're completely justified. Um, she's a pop belly pig, and she really likes his mom. She's okay with his family, but we live about an hour and a half away, so we don't see her very often. So I haven't really had a chance to like bond with her. Establish she doesn't really warm to right. me. Right. Um, I've kind of given up on the dream of like being cuddly with her and friends with her. Yeah. But I'd like to kind of be able to walk past her without her kind of intimidating. Yeah. Sure. You're going to have to intimidate her. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you eat bacon as a rule? Or? I've been a vegetarian for six Damn years. Damn it. Then what's the problem? That was my whole thing. Well, the, the, what about, like, vegetable bacon? Does that exist? It does. You I want this? She's super into it. Pig to be intimidated because she's eating vegetable bacon? <laughs> Nothing you said made sense. Well, listen, I know. I said it out loud. It's fine. <laughs> um, so. Just to work on the phrasing of the question, you want the pig to think that you're not afraid of the pig. You didn't come to us and say, how can I stop being afraid of the pig? Because that's not even an option. No. <laughs> this it pig is, is a monster. Is. This is a kaiju pig at this yeah. point. Basically, Have you yeah. seen the pig do anything bad or dangerous to another human being? Um, not to me, but occasionally she'll kind of, well, no, to me, yes. Um, <laughs> she'll... Are you okay? Are you okay, Charlotte? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my boyfriend and his family is not afraid of her. Like, if you push past her when you're going past her, she'll use, she's fine with it. She just senses my hesitation. Mm. Um, Dang, occasionally. No, Charlotte. <laughs> you're, you're putting a lot of thoughts in this pig brain. Are you sure that the pig senses your hesitation? Okay, I don't know how to convince the pig that you're not intimate, but I do think I know a way for you to get over this. Okay. You're going to need to get, like, a two-and-a-half-pound pig. Okay. Walk past that confidently. You've done it. Good job. Now, like a five pound pig. Yes. Walk past that. You're gonna end up owning a lot of pigs. Yes. This is a bit of a commitment. Yeah. (laughs) It's gonna be a Mr. Popper's Penguin situation. Oh, with pigs. I mean, my name is Charlotte, so I think I was always envisioning having a friend. Yeah. There's so many reasons why this pig should love you. You can just spin a web that says dead meat. Yeah. (laughs) Get in line. Okay. Charlotte, you have to turn the pig against your boyfriend and your boyfriend's family. (laughs) So, next time you go over there, I want you to stand in front of the pig facing them and say, no, you won't kill this pig. That's good. Not on my watch. I won't allow it. It's a good pig. Charlotte, you could try some stuff that intimidates me, so maybe bring up sports in conversation with (laughs) you.
spring up, bring up sports or different kinds of cars that there are. Yeah. And you, should, you could talk, bring up those while you're talking to the pig, and the pig will be, if the pig is anything like me, uh, probably intimidated. Does I that, mean, it work on me, so... Uh, does it help? I think have, it doesn't hurt. Okay, good. Yeah. Yay! Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Let's go over here. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Uh, I'm Adrian Cowles. Hi, Adrian Cowles! Adrian Cowles. <laughs> my brother, my brother, me, legend. Hi, Extre- Adrian. Extremely wild. Thank Hi. you for your service. I try. I know you've read a lot of bad yahoos to bring us some of the good ones, yes. so thank you for that. Mostly, yeah. So, uh... I sent in two, yeah, which one are you Oh, looking? God, Adrian, that's against the rules! Go fucking sit down! No, uh, it's about you, uh, of course, the one about you going to the bathroom at yep. work. Yes. Yep. Uh, so, I'm a teacher, and I'm very, very inefficient, so... Yeah. Thank you. Actually... Uh, I took my first day off of work ever today. This is my second year to come here. Shit, nice. Uh, yeah! Uh, okay. We um, need you more than those kids do. Yeah, I'll be fine. Um, so I stay at work really late, like 7, 7.30. I left at 8.45 the other day. It's bad. And it's often just me and the custodial staff. Right. And, you know, teacher, you just have to go to the bathroom all day. That's sort of your day. Wait, um, wait, what? Well, <laughs> Finally, a job I can sink my teeth into. <laughs> you don't mean, you mean you feel the desire to go to the bathroom all day, not you just go to the bathroom all day, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So like, the end of the day hits, I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom. So I'll go to the bathroom and sometimes I'll come out and make eye contact with the custodian about to go... Like, enjoy clean my work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, have, have fun. Okay, uh, um, the Zodiac killer. Have you found out <laughs> walking out saying, don't worry, I did a very good job? No, 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 it doesn't matter, right, AJ? Because if I'm understanding correctly, I know I'm, I'm getting ahead, but, like, no matter how good of a job you do in there... If you're the last person they see, you're responsible for all crime in the bathroom. Yeah, it's like, do I wait until after they've cleaned it and be like, no, hey, I'm no, gonna go no, no, you no, 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 nasty, no, nasty you monster. I know that's the wrong answer. I'm just saying that's Pervert. my quandary. So this is a thing. This happens to me all the time because we tour a lot and we stay in hotels and every like, I always seem to time leaving my hotel room with as the cleaning staff is right outside my door. And I will look at them and then just put the privacy please on the handle like, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> please, please. I'm so sorry about everything. <laughs> I made coffee in there. I feel terrible. It is, the situation you described of going after is what I run into at the airport a lot when I uh, am sprinting towards the restroom as I want to do. And they have the little sign up like, hold on, you can't go in here. We're doing our work. And then I feel so bad in the opposite arrangement where I'm like, I- I'm going to, I'm gonna wreck it! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there's really not a good order of operations here. Nope. Maybe you could clean the bathroom when you're done. So then when they go in, they're like, dang! And they're like, thanks. I mean, that one's on me. <laughs> could you grade these papers? Ideally, you should do that when you do your stuff anyway. Clean the whole bathroom. Well, at least maintain your own fortress. <laughs> Yeah, maybe come out and say, I used the second stall. I think you'll appreciate my thorough cleaning. (laughs) Sign it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, if you find out an answer, will you let us know? Yeah, usually what I do is I'll go into the break room, and if he's in there, I'll just, like, walk to the perch room, pretend that's why I came in, and leave. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Just go home. I I was worried you were going to use the bathroom in the break room. I was also worried about that. There's a, is- there's a ficus in there that I really hate. <laughs> Does that help? Absolutely. Thank you, Excellent. Adrian. Thank you. Hi. Hello. What's- Hi. My name is Matt S. Matt Siriani. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hello. What is your question? Well, I also broke the rules and put in multiple. Jesus, Matt. You had one about a, a band you might have used to be in. Oh, yes. Tomorrow I'm playing a show. Yes. And the band that I was in for two years, and I left them by ghosting them is, is also playing the night I'm actually opening for them. <laughs> A sumptuous feast. Now, Matt, I'm so glad that you're at the microphone for this one. You gotta walk me through the timeline of how that happened because I'm worried at some point 
you knowingly agreed to that. <laughs> well, I, I think I left the band in... Oh, man. You go like to them so fucking hard that you don't know you left the band? Ju- One day you just I, realized you weren't in it anymore? Yeah. No, that's kind of more or less how it happened. No, July, I think, was when I decided for myself I wasn't in the band that's anymore. That's so recent, man. I know. That sucks. <laughs> Just started playing music out of my own. I knew it was going to happen eventually. I didn't think it was going to happen this Wait, soon. Wait, are you a solo act? Yeah, but I have a full band behind me. Oh, okay. okay. I thought that you were just going to be there in like the dressing room area with them. <laughs> yes. And they might even get confused as to why you were not also going on stage <laughs> with them. And then they would be like, oh, right. Matt doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> Matt. Is it a situation where they have gotten wildly, profoundly successful? Is it Coldplay? Is Coldplay the band that you left last? Um, fortunately for me, not. Okay, Otherwise, good. I'd be even more embarrassed. Right, right. And um, then this would also be a, like a Machiavellian sort of plot mm-hmm. to how, get revenge on How do on you me. feel about the fact that you are opening for I them? was going to say, Matt, like, you, you left the band, and now you're opening for them. I don't think you have to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> like, it seems like if I'm in that band, I'm like, huh, teach that guy. <laughs> I guess he was wrong and we were right. Hey, Matt, play all their songs. <laughs> there you go. I could make them learn new shit on the spot. I want them to come out and be like, anyway, um, you put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> Anything? Is that something? Uh, I'm just going to walk on stage and be like, hey, I'm a, insert band's name, cover band. Yeah. Yeah, That's pretty good. You could also say that you're still in the band. You're just way, 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 way off tempo. (laughs) (laughs) You're rushing a lot. (laughs) About, by about 45 minutes. (laughs) Just keep saying, like, I don't know where the rest of them are. Uh, maybe they're in the bathroom. Uh, here's another one. Just keep getting more amped. Be like, this is feeling good. Let's keep rocking. I'm just going to keep this set going and all night long. When they come in, say, and this is my closing act. And then walk on stage. Does that help? Absolutely. Thank you, Excellent. Matt. I feel like we just dragged you for a while, but thank you for saying it helped. Uh, hello. Hi. How's it going? Hey, is that a McElroy family branded fanny pack? It sure is. Whoa. Well wow. Done. Are those available at McElroyMerch.com? All right. Oh, so I bet nice. those are so convenient for All carrying right. around, say, dice or snacks. We've already got their money. The Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. Nice. Hey now. We should have an official sponsorship does that, with them. Does that come with them? <laughs> it, it may as well. Anyway, hi. What's, what's your name and question? Hi, my name is Rachel. She, her, hers. Thank um, you, Rachel. So I'm a server at a hibachi restaurant. I've worked there for three and a half years. And per the use, they do the cool onion volcano and things. Right, yeah. right. Okay. A waste of an onion, according to some people. <laughs> there are better ways to cook the onion. Thank you, Travis. We can't relitigate this. I want to do cool tricks, too. Right. right. Please help me. But you're not a chef. Absolutely not. I'll You're a server things. at the restaurant. Have you, Absolutely. Have you had training to do these things? They trained me three days, and then I was on my own. So. Okay. Okay, but they didn't train you. Sorry, yes, I think you misunderstand. To flip, to flip shit. They trained you to be a server and not Absolutely. spill drinks on people. <laughs> not yes. how to, I don't know, spin a, spin a plate on your nose. Uh, yeah, can you go to yes. wherever you took the training and say, like, I'm ready for the master course where you teach me to slide somebody's wine glass off of a sharp knife onto the table. I don't know, I don't know what kind of these, these tricks look like. <laughs> Listen, I say you gotta walk before you can run. You just need to start doing the tricks. And at first you won't be good at it, none no. of us are. And at very first, quickly you'll lose your job. That's fine, that's but fine. then you'll get the another end. job. Yeah. And you'll do a little bit better there. And, and you can bit, say, and you don't have to tell them, you can say one of my pride uh, as a server at this place is that I never try to do any hibachi tricks. And that's never been a problem for me, and I don't expect it to be one at this facility. Fucking day one, you're just flipping shrimp into people's mouths, higgledy-biggledy. There's lots of other restaurants you can try You at. could just hand them an empty glass, and you have the pitcher of water, 
and you say, now I'm going to stand back as far as I can yeah. and fill that glass. And then just throw the water up into the air. Oh, or into your open mouth. Just <laughs> holler when you get a powerful thirst going. Do you do that? Like, if, if you're the server at one of those places, can you be like, oh, you need some ketchup? No problem. You just toss it behind your back, catch it in your front, like add a little pizzazz. Yeah, you can do serving. some like, cocktail stuff, yeah, you know? Right. Like, some knife throwing into the table. <laughs> now, you just looked horrified at that. This is your idea. We are not Safety. even a, a, yes ending. We're just saying yes. You know, be a badass trick. Turn the table all the way up on heat or whatever, and then walk up and just say, I uh, hope you all enjoy your food tonight. Stone-faced. Put your hand right on Go the table. Go into the sunken pl- Like, you don't feel it. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do have one thing that usually gets people that people don't expect. So we take, we take the order, and we right. turn it into the chefs. We're like, here's the food. And then we go go take soups out to the table, and it's they're they're hot, like they're like soup is. They're, yeah, they are got you. Hot. Like ninety eight point five percent of soup hot. is. And people see that they're steaming, and so it really annoys them that we have to say that they're hot. Um, so when I hand them out, I take the first two and I set them to my left, and I go, guys, um, I want, just want to let you know the soup is um, soup or hot. That's not a trick. That, it's a good, it's good. good. No, hey, it's fucking hey, so funny, here? obviously. Listen, that rules. Yeah, it's Don't very get good. me wrong. But a trick would be like if you handed them the bowls upside down and flipped it over and it was full of soup. That's, That's an trick. awesome trick. Or if you said, you know what else is super hot? And then you put your hand on the fucking hibachi table. <laughs> Or you hand them that, and at the bottom of it is a note that has their name and social security number on it. Because here's the thing, I don't know how much you can flip, but you can become a mentalist. And it's, listen, it's not the same kind of trick, but I would say mentalism is like the hibachi of magic. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. Does that help? It helps so much, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, Hello. Hi. Uh, you can angle that up if you want. No problem. Just point the microphone. Yeah, you got it. Hi, I'm uh, Jake. Hi, Jake. Uh, Jake. Short while back, I uh, requested some time off, and my boss gave it to me even though I didn't have vacation time to use. It was uh, about 5.36 in the morning after a 13-hour shift, and I was very tired. And when he went to shake my hand, I panicked and I hugged him. Nice. <laughs> Choice. Right. Um... How do I erase this from his memory? Right. Yeah. And how do I overcome my new fear of handshakes? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can practice that. There's some YouTube tutorials about how to <laughs> land that in particular spacecraft. Um, so this is a lot like kind of calling your teacher mommy, yes? On that note, oh, no. do you want to hear where it gets worse? Yeah. You called your boss mommy? I, no, I may have accidentally thanked him by saying, thanks for getting me off those days. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool, Jake. Cool, Jake. Cool, Jake. I am 100% not lying to you. I you need to leave. <laughs> you... Here. You didn't need no, to come back. You needed, didn't need to clarify that you weren't lying. We knew. You can tell. I was. I had a uh, rather emotional little speech lined up about how um, a hug is can be nice uh, with consent, and that maybe it just brought you two closer, and maybe it was special, but then. You talked about how you did kind of a jizz joke. <laughs> and now I don't feel like my thing is going to cut the mustard yes. anymore. There was definitely an avenue I was going to ask, did he hug you back? Was it a nice moment? Other I, than I do actually need to know this information. Yeah, you did hug he back? hug you back? Um, so it was kind of like an awkward side hug at first. A Christian side and hug, then, yeah. yes. Then, yes. And then we shook hands over it, kind of. Oh my God! <laughs> oh no! Oh my it's the God. worst possible. I would have said sooner you'd be stabbed in the flank with a switchblade. Did you? Did you then accidentally pull his arm off? <laughs> and then you yanked out his pants. Like what happened? And then your pants fell down. 
<laughs> Holy so, shit, Jake. God, Jake, you fucked up so bad. <laughs> Okay. That's you should have asked us before when we could have done something. <laughs> so, Jake. My original question still holds. Did he hug you back at any point? I mean, he put one arm back around my back, too, I guess. It was right. the weirdest, you know, kind of like... Yeah, the weirdest, weirdest, imagin yeah. weirdest imaginable like, hug. Yes, we've yeah. established. <laughs> um, so You might have actually reached a point that warrant going to him and saying, I also know how bad that was. <laughs> we, we are past the point of joking now, Jake. I'm worried about you and this other person who both of you were in this moment. I'm filing a complaint with HR, not against you or myself, but against the moment. Yes. <laughs> like you should both be mad at fate and what it For made you For bringing you together. Do. A lot of people talk about serendipity like it's always a good thing. Nope. <laughs> Sometimes it gets you. Sometimes two human bodies interlock in such a way that it butterfly effects out and causes World War III. Have you? It's not a butterfly effect. It got you immediately. It was a bee effect. You put your hands together on top of a bee and it got you. So Jacob, where do you work now? <laughs> That's actually the thing, is that my job pays too much to leave, yeah. so I'm okay. kind of stuck in this money trap and this, you know, <laughs> this nightmare. Seems, this seems like a question less about human intimacy and more about power dynamics, which is to say, you're going to have to be the boss. <laughs> now you're the somehow. boss. Somehow. And then you can say, now that I'm the boss, what was up with that hug? <laughs> <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> you should have... Jacob, you should apologize for this hug. Yes. The or, time for jokes is past. You must apologize. Unless. No. Jokes is left no, around. Unless. Jokes, unless. jokes, get out of here. Unless. Jokes, step steak, on the stage. Jokes, come on back up. Oh. Jokes waiting in the wings. Come on down. Can you establish this as, like, your secret handshake with the boss? <laughs> Would you perhaps have any, like, friends in the office that you can repeat this with in front of the boss. And the boss is like, oh, it turns out it's not weird. Yeah. Jake's just weird. Should, <laughs> should we do the normal 2019 handshake for millennials and hip dads? Hey, jokes off the stage. You can't just hug people. Yes, also that, Jake. It's 2019, you have to apologize. It was an accident, it happened. You must apologize for the hug, <laughs> Jacob. I, I would agree with Justin already. If it didn't go beyond just hugging someone to invading both their space and psyche. And now, at this point, their privacy. There's 3,000 people here. <laughs> Jake, do you promise you apologize for the hug? Yeah. And you are dismissed. Done. Thank you. Right, thank thank you. you, Jake. That's it. All right, you can lower the house lights. Right. Thank you. Once Jacob is safely nestled, I don't want him to trip. No, that would be the worst thing to ever happen to Jake. <laughs> Jake, it nice and cozy. We'll yes, wait. thank okay. you. All right. How's now your seat, you Jake? Make... Is it cozy? Good. All warmed up. You good? Like a nice warm hug. Okay. You don't. You don't. You don't have a microphone anymore, Jake. The power's all back here. All right, if you could go ahead and Make turn Jake their disappear. lights. Make them go away. There are too many of them. I can't go back. You monsters. Uh, thank you so much for having us here at your beautiful theater. Uh, and, and I will also say, your beautiful town. Your beautiful yeah, Brooklyn. town. Oh, hell of a town. Uh, hey, uh, if you don't have anything going on tomorrow, we're coming back. <laughs> And we might just sleep in the green room. Yeah. yeah. There, Doing all the same jokes. Jake's going to be here. It's going to be fucking lit. There's a few of you that aren't so far. Yes. And it would be cool if all of you did. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, If you could just come to that show, we really appreciate it. Or maybe it. just tell a friend. Say, tell I went friend. last night. It was great and not at all awkward. We have uh, beautiful posters uh, 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 designed by Carrie Peach uh, out in the lobby that are so, so beautiful. Uh, if you bought one or got any kind of merch on your way out, you can grab a sticker uh, for free on your way out. They become the Monster Tour sticker. Yes, Paul is texting me this information as we speak. He also says not to stick them to anything in the theater. So, yes. so because Paul's he... a cop. So <laughs> uh, We also want to say thank you to Sawbones for opening for us. Yeah. 
We got a book, too. It's called The Sawbones Book. You buy it on Amazon or maybe in the hallway. I don't yes. know. Uh, uh, also, speaking of books, uh, pre-orders for book three of The Adventure Zone, Pedals to the Metal. Yes. That is available now. You can go to The Adventure... Well, the pre-order is available now. That was a bad way of phrasing it. You can go to theadventurezonecomic.com and pre-order it now. It will be out in July, but why wait? Yeah. Uh, and uh, go to our YouTube channel. We announced the new season of Adventure Zone today that Travis is going on. Very it's, a, it's a really cool trailer, and you'll like it. Uh, uh, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the user theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Uh, we, we have a whole uh, trek back down to, like, I don't know. We're staying in downtown, and we're doing this show here because we're bad at planning. So we won't be able we're to hang out. We're very good at planning. We designed it this way. We're we, staying in the building where they do Tootsie, all right? We're all staying right. in the middle of the city. We're staying we're in the building. Up. We're, this is not a joke. We're staying in the building where we did the blue carpet premiere of Margaritaville. We have ha. to see... We have to still re- chalk outlines of where we died. <laughs> right. Uh, so we won't be able to hang out at this show, it's unfortunate. But we'll be but here tomorrow. It's cool. Just come see us tomorrow. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's like the after party of this show. <laughs> right. This uh, final Yahoo uh, was sent in by Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian, wherever you are. It's from Yahoo Answers user Crisp Kringle, who asks, Does Subway have secret baloney? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, me kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. Hey, I'm Janet Varney. And like many of you, some more recent than others, I used to be a teenager. In fact, just about all of my friends were too, including wonderful women like Alison Brie. I'm dead center on the balance beam. And this is like a big gym. All the kids' parents are there watching. I have to stop. Like, you know, when you have to pee so bad and you can't even move. And then I just go. I just pee right in the middle of the high balance beam. (laughs) So join me every week on the JV Club podcast where I speak with complicated, funny, messy humans as we reminisce about our adolescences and how they led us to becoming who we are. Find it every Thursday on Maximum Fun.